Super Bowl 51, a scene that continues that will never be forgotten. The Patriots somehow, some way, from 25 points down, have won Super Bowl 51. The commissioner shakes hands with the MVP. He gives the trophy to the Kraft family, Robert, Jonathan, and New England. Where do we begin? Where do we end? <laughs> this, this is NFL primetime. You know the music. You know the scene. I'm Chris Berman. This is a one-time MVP of this Super Bowl, Steve Woo. Young. This is Randy Moss, who played with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and the Patriots. All we have to say is if this was preordained, all oh, the commissioner and the trophy and the history, and if this was preordained, what an odd way to deliver it. Wow! I, I feel like I was a witness. I feel like something really special generationally happened in one of the great football games in the history of the game. And then it happened to be at a time and a place where Tom Brady, I mean, those of us that have climbed Everest and put the flag in yes. and smelled the air, lack of it or whatever <laughs> else, but then you have to come back down. And I just got to feel that Tom Brady has basically built a house up there he's just gonna live there he doesn't like the lower elevation he's just gonna hang out there and there's something about tonight that just feels like it's different than any other big games how many Super Bowls have we sat or watched stood and watched the last play go either way great games but something about this game and what it meant for five Super Bowls for the Patriots Tom Brady five and what was on the line and how it came and unfolded Randy I gotta be honest with you I sat there and when they scored to win it I'm like I was here, and I'll be telling my kids, I was here. Well, the thing about it, man, it, it was a lot of buzz in the air, man. I'm actually speechless. Down 28-3, to three, it was it was flat in the stadium. You know, you couldn't hear nothing. You know, coming on to this show, boom, you looked at Roger Goodell and Tom Brady shaking hands. I read Roger Goodell's lips. Awesome. Awesome. It was an awesome night. It was an awesome performance. Just not by Tom Brady, but by, by the Patriots uh, as a whole. Great play calling offensively. Great defensive calling when you needed to stop the offense of the Atlanta Falcons. And as a whole, man, the confetti fell. Man, like I said, I'm speechless for words. Boom. Historical moment for the National Football League and the New England Patriots tonight. 28 to 3. Let's let's back up a sec. We're going to show it all because there's so much to show that even we need a breath before we get started. As do you. The first Patriots touchdown came with 17 minutes left in the game. Two minutes left in the third quarter. And oh, by the way, things are going so bad. They missed the kick. They try an onside That's kick. kick they botch it, and it's over. Right. And it's over. Well. Yep. I'm, uh, part of me, part of me feels like the emotion that you, when you come back like that, you saw the the Patriots. This should be old hat, right? right? It's as if they've never been here before. The emotion I've never seen the emotion from this team, and there's a feeling for Tom Brady. What, what accomplished tonight? I feel. You come, no on come, come on, you come on up here. Come on up here. Get him, come get him here. a mic or something. Come on up here, coach. Bring that up here. <laughs> take my, take this my coach mic. Belichick, congratulations. Yes. Here, Boomer, right here. Watch out, Boomer, right here. There you go, Coach. Listen, this is the only thing we did. That's <laughs> all right. You weren't a headset before. I got it. Congratulations. I got it. Thanks, Boomer. It's too soon to put into words, isn't it? It is. It's an unbelievable game. Just an unbelievable game. These guys competed so hard. Down 21 nothing, 21-3, 28-3. Missed an extra point, 28-9. Couple two-point conversions. But they just kept fighting. Hightower's play was a big play. We needed that one. And then we had some good kickoff coverage plays, created some field position, and, you know, last drive. I mean, offensive line did an unbelievable job against those pass rushers. I mean, it's, it's a team, total team win. Well, Coach, you know him? A lot, of, a, a lot of people didn't expect this game to go into overtime. As the, as, as the leader of the Patriots, take us through the overtime of how you were feeling and how you were going to call the game to win this. Well, you know, it looked like we were starting to press them there in the fourth quarter. We, you know, a lot of no huddle, a lot of empty formations, a lot of passing, and and uh, we, you know, decided to do that in overtime. We probably basically did the same thing rather than go back to like our first quarter type of game plan. We thought we had them on the run a little bit, and uh, you know, our conditioning, you know, paid off on our offensive line. I don't know how many plays we played tonight, but it had to be close to 90. 
Uh, we're out there a lot, but, you know, those guys look strong, and, and uh, you know, we get, did a good job pass blocking. Yeah. Coach, I've never seen you so emotional. Oh, my God. Well, I've never. I mean, it had to be just, they're not shocking, but just the, the, the downs and the ups, and then, then finally climbing the top. I've never seen you. Well, you un, know. Un, to feel the way. I mean, we all felt that. Usually we don't. We don't get that chance to feel it with you. We all felt it with you the way you were showing it. Yeah, I think, you know, in the third quarter, it, you know, we were just thinking if we just get it to a one-score game or just get it to a 10-point game, but we never really could until we got the turnover and, and then we scored and then we got the two-point conversion and were able to back them up with a good kickoff. Of course, they got right out of there and then the, the holding penalty and the, um, the sack there kept them out of field goal range, so that was, a you know, a huge play for us too. So, um but, you know, we're just trying to get it to a one-score game. Thought, you know, anything could happen there. But we had a hard time getting to that point. You'd like to say, okay, whatever he had at 25, 30 minutes at halftime, there was a speech and we came fought. But even the third quarter wasn't a – first score wasn't until two minutes left in the third quarter. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you had to look up and go, boy, I mean, we have it in us, but do we have time? Yeah, we're running out of time. That's right, we were. And, and again, the, the high tower's turnover was, was the key mm -hmm. play. Without that, uh, you know, I don't know if we have enough possessions or, or could get it done quick enough, but um, – you know, that was huge. And then, honestly, I mean, when they got the ball back with a minute to go, like, that, they're pretty dangerous, especially with the field goal kicker they have. I mean, all they got to do is get across the 50, and, you know, he made that 58-yarder against uh, San Diego. So, you know, we knew that, that they had a long, a long, uh, a good, you know, they didn't need much field position to get in the field goal range. So, uh, fortunately, we were able to, get, you know, get the end of the clock. And then we, we tried to run that, uh, you know, the, 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 the hill, we call it the hilltopper play, the fake kneel down. Right. But they, they played that pretty good. So, Coach, it looked like Atlanta defense just said, we're going to play man free safety. Wave to Tom Brady to free. Hey, I'm here. We're going to line up. And it, they never stopped. It seemed it a couple of cover twos, a little here and there, but it was all single safety. Man. Most of it, yeah. And they, I mean, it's just like they lined up and said, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, and, I'd say it's probably about three to three to one, you know, post safety man, a little bit of post safety zone, a little bit of two deep man. A little here but and there, much, but, but, but really it, it, was a, it was a cover one game. It was a cover one game, absolutely. And we didn't have a lot of success running the ball. Uh, but, you know, we were able to make enough throws outside, and that finally, you know, was the difference for us. And we were able to get the ball to the perimeter to, to Hogan and Julian, Danny on that, uh, you know, sideline route there in overtime. So, you know, those are some big plays for us. Well, Coach, last is my last question. With, with, with Tom struggling in the first half and then being able to come back in the second half and just wow the whole, the whole world, you know, just, just talk about his greatness, Coach. Just, just where do you see Tom winning his fifth Super Bowl? Just, just talk about it, Coach. Well, you know, again, Randy, it was one of those games where, you know, we, we moved the ball, but we didn't have any points to show for it in the first half. We, but we had some decent drives. But we just kept grinding it out, you know, just keep trying to find plays. James White gave us quite a few plays. Right. You know, Malcolm Mitchell stepped up and gave us some plays. Mm -hmm. Marty gave us some big plays. Yes. And, you know, we were just trying to, to squeeze out some, some plays here and there, you know, in man coverage, primarily in man coverage. And uh, you know how Tom is. I mean, he just grinds away, you know. We right. can do this, and okay, well, it looks like we do that. And it looks like, okay, we can do this. And, you know, we had some of those first and ten, second and tens, but finally on third and ten, you know, well, we hit it. Was that, was that a halftime adjustment, knowing that y'all had to beat man coverage? Is that something y'all did on the sideline in the second half, knowing that y'all had to do it? Well, I'd say we saw it about midway through the first quarter. Okay. You know, we said, okay, uh, to me, the game declared at the end of the first quarter. It was a man-to-man -man game with free safety, and it was an outside run game. And, you know, we didn't do a great job at either one of them, but it declared early, and then we just played it from there. But let's um, let you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, man. Coach. Thank you. I got one more. Let's back up to Julian Edelman's catch, which was in a sea of about four players. Yes. They challenged. It was close. What was you? Did, what, what did you think before uh, they challenged you? Did you think, okay, they called a catch? Yeah. Was that ch that put it all into motion, didn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, the catch that Julio made on the sideline oh. was unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> and I was, I had the flag out of my pocket, and then I saw the replay on it, and it wasn't even close. I mean, he got both feet down five foot. Uh, and then Julian's play, I, it looked like, uh, no, <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, the Seattle game, right. you know, on Malcolm. And then when they replayed it, it was, then he got his hand under there. So uh, that was a great So you know, the conversation then for, the, for that drive to, to tie it. Give me a couple of conversations with you and Tom, and I'll let you go. You've been more than gracious. So now you got the ball, you're in position, you got plenty of time. Yet, 
Yeah, I mean, look, everything's, you know, it's four down territory. We're going to, you know, try to use our backs. They gave us a couple zones there at the end. We were able to hit James on those little yeah. angle routes against. I think they finally figured, hey, got to do something different. <laughs> yeah, they played that weak side zone coverage. And so there was a lot of space there. Tom, you know, saw that and hit it. Uh, you know, Josh called a great game. You know, he had some, uh, and getting Danny, you know, that was another zone call where the safety was kind of inside. Danny ran the option route on the on the curl foot defender, and, you know, beat him to the end zone. So, um, you know, great, great execution. And you can't you give our offensive tackles a lot of credit. I mean, Nate and uh, Marcus Cannon blocked Beasley. They blocked Reed and they blocked Freeney. Uh, not perfectly, but, you know, they blocked them. I don't know how many times they threw the ball. It had to be 60 passes tonight. Yeah. Listen. Just another night at the office. Right, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing night, Chris. An unfor unforgettable night. And, uh, of course, to be able to, you know, have uh, Stephen and Brian on the staff, uh, you know, to win one with them is just uh, makes it even more special. Congratulations. Number and, uh, five. And, I mean, it. And this is, you know, I know on your oh, farewell stop. tour, <laughs> you know, I'm glad, well, glad I can make a stop on that, too. <laughs> well, no, you know what? And you gave me overtime. You didn't want to let me go. Thank you <laughs> very right. much. That was very kind of you. I, I appreciate it. You got it. it. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you got Thank it. You Thanks for coming. I mean, really appreciate it. All right. You got it, Coach. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Well. A little unexpected. How's that for you? <laughs> so you wanted to break down the hey, game? Rich, tell you what. <laughs> so the analysts need so to go we're done. Analysts need to go home now. So, all right, the game. What were we talking about? Some game? Why don't we come back and show you what happened? Houston, hello!